Morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Happy New Year. So I'm just going to show you a quick little video to introduce you to our next topic, circular motion, before you do a tutorial that looks at all the details and concepts that go along with it. All right, so it's, it's, not a, it's a fairly familiar situation uh, that I want us to employ force diagrams and reason things out because the problem I'm going to present to you is, well, it's simple. It's not obvious at all, and there's a lot of misconceptions out there, so let's get them out of the way to kind of clear the air so that when we introduce the physics of circular motion, we can hopefully connect it back. Okay, so let me uh, turn our attention to the apparatus. Okay, so I have here a simple ramp with a loop. Okay, so maybe many of you have been on a roller coaster ride that does something like this, or maybe had some toys like the Hot Wheels where the cars go through the loop. And we have the marble, and the marble is, there's nothing special about it, it will fall down. And so if I release the marble from here, let's say, and I go down through, you see that it falls off the ramp. And then I think you know that if I release it at a higher place, it makes it through. Okay, hopefully I captured that. So here's the question that I want us to consider. When the marble is right here, and we know it made through the loop, why didn't it fall? Okay, why did it stay on the track? So before we go any further, make a mental force diagram of the ball here, or actually do it on a piece of paper, just sketch it out. All right, so here I have the camera trained on a whiteboard where I represent the ball at the top of the loop. And we want to know why doesn't it fall? So the most common answer I hear before we do anything formal is, well, there's something holding it up, okay? Because clearly we know that there is a force of gravity trying to pull it down. Let me use a red marker for that. Okay, so if I draw an FG vector, that's the reason why we expect it to fall. Yet we saw in a video that it doesn't fall. Okay, so what's holding it up? Well, we go through our same process in any force diagram. We ask what forces may be acting on it, and if we're not sure, we ask what object is exerting that force. So is there an applied force? Is there something external to the ball that's acting on it? And in one sense, no. In the other sense, yes, we could say the track is. Okay, and we see that the ball is underneath the track, and the only thing that the track could do to it is push it downward. Now you might call that the normal force. In fact, I'm gonna call it the normal force. So that normal force, which is the track pushing down on the ball, is not up. The ball is pushing up on the track by the third law of motion, but the ball isn't holding itself up. It can't hold itself up. So the track is pushing it down. All right, is there uh, resistive forces? Yeah, there's probably resistive forces in the opposite direction of the motion, but let's assume that they're essentially small. We can ignore them. So if we go through the rest of the uh, options, there are no other options. And so if we understand, you, you trust that you've been told all the possible forces that can act on it, and you can say, well, what other object it could be pushing it up, you find that there is none. So what do we conclude? Well, the force diagram is telling us our net force is the sum of normal force and gravity, okay? And it's down, so sigma F is Fg plus Fn, that's definitely not zero. In fact, it's down, so our only conclusion is that when you ask why doesn't it fall, well, that's the wrong question. It is falling, okay? In fact, it's falling, with it's accelerating downward with an acceleration greater than G because the net force is greater than F of G. So why doesn't it fall off the track? Okay, so this is where the key to circular motion is. So first of all, we see in circular motion that it accelerates towards the center. It's accelerating, in this case, downward towards the center of the circle. But another thing we gotta understand is which way is it moving? So at this instant, when it's at the top, it's moving to the right. Now that's not a force, that's just a velocity vector. And so, is there any force to oppose that velocity vector? And the answer is no, we don't have any force. I mean, maybe there's a little resistive force here, but like I said, we can ignore it. So here's what's happening, is while it's falling at the top here, it's also still moving forward, right? The first law of motion says it still has to move forward. So it actually does fall at the same time, move forward, 
And what happens is the track also falls with it because it's curving away. In other words, at this instant, the ball wants to move this way and it wants to fall a little bit and the curve happens to, if you will, fall with it so it hugs the track. So when you ask what's holding it up, the answer is nothing is holding it up. You might say, well, why doesn't it fall? It does fall, but it also continues moving forward. And since it continues moving forward, it hugs the track. Okay, so not an obvious answer to a simple question, but here are the key things that we're going to emphasize again and again with the rest of the notes, is that you're still doing the same force diagram. We're going to find almost always the net force is directed towards the center of the circle. In other words, if I were to draw the forces on the ball here, okay, it's a little bit more complicated and we generally won't deal with that, but the track is pushing it that way. Gravity's trying to pull it that way. So the net force is gonna be something like akin to that. Okay, but it's still going to keep moving forward in its direction. Second thing is, we, we said the acceleration is inward. The velocity is always going to be tangent to the circle. Okay, it's always moving in such a way that it's going wants to go in a straight line. And, and then th that's really what the rest of the chapter is about, is, a, is connecting those parameters.